Afternoon everyone, um, here we are with another equation explainer. This time we're going to look at the equation for pressure and as usual we're going to look at the definition, we're going to look at our triangle, we're going to try and make an a mnemonic if I can say the word and we're going to try um, a question from an exam. Okay, as I've said before if you've got flashcards this would be great addition to your repertoire as you're revising. You could take notes as we go, you can pause the video whenever you like um, really use the video in any way you want okay and as I'll say at the end no doubt please make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure that you um, ask questions put a comment I read them and I'm um, always looking to see what else I can add to this so just let me know okay so let's get started we're looking at pressure here now if we want to define pressure we define it in this way we would define pressure P which is measured in Pascals as the ratio of force F to two area Okay, or force and area. I think you could be okay with it at GCSE level. Okay, so that is pressure is the ratio of force to area. Okay, um, that's a fairly standard definition. This would be applied in GCSE, but also in A level and in um, uh, IB level. Okay, and it's usually it could be a question that might come right at the beginning of a bigger question, just to sort of settle you down, and calm your nerves if you have any. Okay, now what we want to do is look at a calculation, so we're going to look at the triangle. Now this time we're going to construct our triangle in a slightly different way. We're going to go from the definition there. Now pressure is the ratio, so what we're expecting here is pressure to be on one of those bottom sides, and we'll see why that is in a second. Okay, and it's the ratio of force, which is on the top, to area. Okay, pressure is the ratio of force to area, which means that force goes on the top, and pressure and area are on the bottom. As I say, I've said before, you could remember the triangle if you like. You could remember that definition, or you can use the mnemonic I'll give you in a second. I, any of those ways are fine. You may have your own method, and I'd love to hear them as well. Okay, as we know, the equation comes in three forms or three variables. So we'll look at these here. This one's the multiple form. We'll be using that one later. Okay, um, and that says to me that F is equal to P times A. We then got P is equal to F over A, and that's really the equation that comes from the definition. Okay, so again, you could remember this in different ways. We're just exploring the whole equation. And then lastly, we've got A equal to F over P. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've not seen many questions um, which require you to use this third form, but as we'll see in a second, they do exist. And I think this is a nice example of how we use equations and how we can um, manipulate them so that we can... Uh, get the answer to the question despite not really knowing what we're going to be doing. As always, I like to give you a mnemonic. And a mnemonic, I always go for it in the multiple form. Again, that's because I know that we've got an equal side there. I don't need to worry about remembering what's dividing what. I just remember that two second quantities, um, second and third quantities, are multiplying together to make the first. So here's my attempt. And again, let me know if you've got a better one. I've said that forces push anything. Okay, F, P, A. Forces push anything. F equals P A. Okay, I did think about forces press areas. Okay, forces push areas. Anything you want. Okay, as long as you can remember it and you can remember it in the right order, then that's absolutely fine. I'll reiterate this is for remembering our F equal to P multiplied by A. All right, so as I say, if you want to pause the video at this stage, I would do so now. Get this noted down, draw the triangle. Write the equation, write the definition, whatever you want to do. If you're ready, however, we'll go and have a look at our past paper question. And this again is from an extended paper, and it's one that you should be able to do knowing this equation. Here we go. We've got, um, this has been taken out of a, a, a bigger question, so I, I probably should give some context here. It's a question about a raft and a person. And the raft is on the surface of water. Okay. And we're being asked now to calculate the area of the raft in contact with the water. Now, as I said before, it's very rare that you would be used, you'd be asked to use the equations in this way, but it is does exist. Okay, these questions do exist. We know pressure, and we're being asked to think about areas, and we've got a force there as well. So this is great, um, a great candidate for our F, um, our F equal to PA equation. Now. As we should always do at the beginning of a question, let's have a look at that bottom right hand side there. We should look at the number of marks, two mark questions, so we're not expecting any tricks here. Um, and we're also just checking out that the units are being given. 
because um, this will guide us in terms of our work. Okay, we want to get an area in meters squared. Again, we'll write down what we know. We know the weight, and now the weight in this case is going to be our force. That's 1,100 newtons. We know the pressure, which is our 500 pascals, and we want to know the area. So I like to write it in this way. Our, this way, our F is equal to the 1,100, P, 500, A equal to question mark. We're then going to um, write down our equation now again. If I'm imagining that I'm remembering my multiple form, forces push anything. Forces push areas. So there I want to write down my F equal to P multiplied by A. Okay, now at this stage, if you're feeling confident, you could rearrange the equation. You could rearrange to A equal to F divided by P. But actually, you don't need to. And we'll see how, because all we have to do now is put the values in. I know my F, I know my P. And so therefore, I know that 1,100 is equal to 500 multiplied by A. And then therefore, if I want to now get the... Um, the answer, my A is going to be, I'm going to have to divide everything by 500. And so therefore, both sides by 500, I've got 1,100 divided by 500, 2.2. Well, there you go. There's my 2.2. Now, why have I done it in that way? I know that some students feel less comfortable rearranging letters and more comfortable rearranging numbers because you'll have done this in maths um, a lot. And so therefore, if you're comfortable rearranging the equation straight off, go for it. If you're not, however, just put the numbers in. And the one that's left is going to be the one that you're going to calculate and you're going to use your calculator to get that value okay so this is a really nice example of how to do a slightly harder question maybe a slightly less obvious question but one which um, really tests our ability to use equations and to understand what the question is really asking okay i said at the beginning i'll say it again questions if you've got them please ask them if you've got your own mnemonic let me know if you think mine's rubbish let me know i'm happy to hear any of your feedback um, and any, any particular equations that you need some help remembering, please get in touch. Thanks for watching.